no matter what the circumstances, regardless of the situation, even in the most trying of times. His gangling, homespun charm and high spirits are an inspiration. But what makes Goofy so goofy? Let's go back to 1932 when he made his inauspicious screen debut. It all began in Mickey's review with a role as a spectator during a performance. Originally, he was known as Dippy Dog, or occasionally Dippy the Goof. But one look at his awkward demeanor and a name change was inevitable. Jack Kenny, veteran animator, story man, and director, began with Disney in 1931 and eventually headed the Goofy unit. The reason I picked the, the Goof is the character I like to, to like to do, having worked with all the rest of them, was the fact that he was such a nice, lean, easy-going kind of a guy, and his, his, his actual frame of his body was a type that you could bend, twist, turn upside down, tie in knots, pull. We even have his eyeballs bounce out and back and forth. But you do anything with the guy. There was no end to the trials and tribulations Goofy suffered at the hands of his animators, but he always came out smiling. Mice. <laughs> Goofy's first lead are, role was opposite an insect pal named Wilbur. A lazy day of fishing allowed Goofy to run the full range of emotions from grief. I'll never see him again. <laughs> Goodbye, old pal. <laughs> to absolute joy. Wilbur! Wilbur! Gosh, Wilbur. Thought you was a goner. It was a performance that led to his starring role in The Reluctant Dragon and a segment that guaranteed Goofy's screen immortality, How to Ride a Horse. Only the magic of the slow motion camera can do justice to the grace and beauty of this spectacle. I'd gotten the okay from Walt uh, to do a how to, how to two series with the Goof using narration, and we first started, we started, the first one was with uh, How to Ride a Horse, which Walt was much into because of his playing the polo bit, you know. And then from there on, we just picked any particular sport that we happened to think might be a going thing at the time or in season. From then on, the sky was the limit when it came to Goofy's instructional adventures. His hilarious methods of trial and error led to one of the most popular series of cartoons in Hollywood. The sailor has developed the perfect set of sea legs. It's, it's black. <coughs> the pitching demands limber brains and well-coordinated muscles, not only in the throwing arm, but of the entire body, in order to achieve that bullet-like delivery of the ball. A death flick of the wrist. Whip of the pole, the tug of the line, and uh, the angler can easily imagine a fighting fish in a crystal pool. What a gal! But Goofy's proudest moment would have to be his unusual dual role in Motor Mania as a peaceful family man who becomes a monster when he gets behind the wheel. Mr. Walker is now Mr. Wheeler, a motor. Motor Mania was awarded the Buyer Trophy for the best film on traffic safety. I loved the guy. I loved him because of his personality. He was a, a the kind of person that uh, anyone would like to be, you know. And not bothered by anything. He's not worried about the world conditions or anything else. It was, it was his world. Goofy's winning streak continued with an Academy Award nomination for a demanding performance and stunt work in the water skiing romp Aquamania. And of course, his triumphant return to the screen as a ghost in Mickey's Christmas Carol. performance that was dramatic, dangerous, and unmistakably goofy. Gosh, kind of slippery. 